Until now, African countries saw France directly intervening in their internal matters and doing things that showed its true intentions. However, nobody actually paid attention to the U.S., which also has bases and military presence in various African countries, including Niger. After the coup in Niger, the U.S. looked at the situation carefully, and inevitably, it sided with France. Therefore, as of now, the U.S. has announced it has suspended the $500 million aid to Niger because of the coup. But Kno one thing, this aid had to be used for civilians, their education and welfare programs. The military junta would never use it. In other words, the US has clearly given a message that it does not care for the people of Niger if its leaders don't become Western puppets. How has the US done this and how shamefully it still wants to have bases and military presence in Niger despite disliking the Niger military junta? Above all, Will the military leaders in Niger decide to kick out U.S. troops as well? Let's know about this. The United States has drastically cut Niger's aid by a staggering $500 million. However, this should not be seen as an isolated move, but in connection with the French troop withdrawal from the country. With this withdrawal, it has been made clear that Niger is no longer a Western puppet that will do whatever is ordered. Therefore, as sending aid without getting benefits in return seems not a good deal. The U.S. announced to end its aid to Niger. Matthew Miller, the spokesperson for the State Department, said that the revival of U.S. aid depends on the swift and credible efforts to restore democratic governance. In other words, he implicitly said that the U.S. would offer aid only if there was a puppet, president back in power. You should know that the U.S., alongside regional stakeholders in West Africa and France, had actively pushed for the reinstatement of President Mohamed Bazoum. This means that Bazoum is the puppet the West is dying to have back in power, but the Niger military is in no mood of allowing that to happen. But there is another dimension of this move as well. Until now, the US had been thinking about whether to call the military takeover a coup or not. If it calls it a coup, this means the government is illegitimate. However, if it's called a takeover, then things are pretty fine. In other words, if Niger accepted to follow the U.S. orders, despite having a junta in power, the West was ready to not call it a coup. By knowing this, you can understand how the U.S. plays the word game. Even if a dictator is in power but is in favor of the West, he is never called a dictator. However, if someone comes into power and the people also support him but are against the West, he is deemed the worst dictator. To make it sound legitimate, a senior U.S. official stressed that the aid cut was a consequence of comprehensive efforts over the past couple of months to uphold Niger's constitutional order. Meanwhile, the French military's withdrawal of its 1,400-strong deputation from Niger signals the initiation of a complex and arduous process expected to conclude by the year's end. Already, French soldiers have begun leaving their bases, with the first convoy heading towards Chad under the protection of Niger's post-coup government. The logistical complexities of the withdrawal are compounded by the scarcity of secure routes out of the region, plagued by various jihadist factions. Furthermore, the closure of Niger's borders and the ban on French flights over its airspace pose additional challenges to the withdrawal process. But all these challenges are artificially made so the withdrawal can be delayed as much as possible. However, the decision to pull out French forces from Niger deals a blow to France's influence in itself on the African continent and its global standing. This occurrence marks the third instance in the last 18 months where former colonies have expelled French troops. Additionally, the shift away from French influence is evident as Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso have demonstrated inclinations towards alternative international partnerships. Mali, notably, has turned towards Moscow and engaged the controversial Wagner Group. In a symbolic move affirming their stance on sovereignty, Niger's military leaders have welcomed France's diplomatic and troop withdrawals as a step towards asserting the nation's independence. However, France continues to express its support for the ousted government of President Mohamed Bazoum, who remains confined to house arrest in Niamey. Since the U.S. knows that after cutting aid, the Niger junta will kick the troops out. It is preparing to end bases in Niger. But the question is, 
Whether preparation means an absolute ending or just a plan to show that the U.S. will leave. The United States is currently getting ready with backup plans to evacuate two crucial drone and counterterrorism bases in Niger, in case the need arises under the country's newly established ruling junta. Air Force General James Hecker, who oversees operations in Africa, disclosed that these plans include identifying potential allied nations in the Sahara and Sahel regions, renowned worldwide for their active extremist groups aligned with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. The primary goal is to assess the possibility of moving U.S. resources to these allied nations, if the situation demands it. Hecker stressed that the Biden administration has yet to make any definitive decisions regarding the necessity for U.S. diplomats or security forces to leave Niger following the overthrow of the democratically elected president by the military on July 26. However, the U.S. must know that the final decision will be made by Niger and it has to comply with it. If the U.S. forces are compelled to depart, either due to the administration's inability to collaborate with the current junta or as a result of the junta's directive, Hecker acknowledged that it would undoubtedly affect U.S. intelligence and counterterrorism operations. Nevertheless, he expressed optimism for a peaceful diplomatic resolution to the crisis to prevent such a scenario. But these bases are more for securing the U.S. interests than for fighting terrorists. That's why the Pentagon has been often found misleading the Congress on the numbers and cost of these bases. You should know that now, the whole West is aligned to call Bazoum the legitimate and democratic leader. It's because he is the man the West wants in office, who will ensure the West's interests. Junta leaders have reportedly warned that any intervention by Niger's West African neighbors to reinstall Bazoum to power would result in his death. Hecker said that, officially labeling the events in Niger as a coup, could potentially lead to the termination of several military and security connections between the two nations. Hecker anticipated that it might take several weeks, if not longer, for U.S. officials to announce any decision concerning an evacuation, should the need arise. Niger had previously stood as one of the rare countries in the Sahara and Sahel regions of West Africa that operated without a military-backed government or alignment with Russian mercenaries. Hecker refrained from specifying the alternative West African countries under consideration for potential relocation, stating that the decision-making process would heavily involve diplomatic considerations. He also noted that the evacuation plans contain both gradual and rapid withdrawal scenarios, ensuring the protection of the most sensitive equipment in case of departure. But how important are the U.S. bases in Niger? There are two bases in Niger and out of them. Niger Air Base 201 is most important. Niger Air Base 201, sometimes referred to as Nigerian Air Base 201, is a U.S. drone air base situated near Agadez, Niger. Positioned about 5 kilometers southeast of Agadez, the base is owned by the Nigerian military, but was built and financed by the United States. It's because this base gives the U.S. reach to the entire Africa, allowing it to send drones and jets to whichever African country it wants. Not only that, but this access allows the U.S. to gather intelligence which no other country has. The U.S. military first established its presence at Base 201 on April 19, 2016. The runway is large enough to accommodate both General Atomic's MQ-9 Reaper-armed drones and the notably larger Boeing C-17 Globemaster III transport aircraft. In July 2019, the base hosted the 409th Air Expeditionary Group and the 401th Civil Affairs Battalion. Official intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance flights from the base began on November 1, 2019. Now, if these two military bases are evacuated, not only will it be a loss of investment for the U.S., but will deprive it of valuable intelligence. The influence it used to have in other countries by leveraging on the bases would no longer be there. Not only the bases, but the U.S. troops are also being taken care of. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. As of now, U.S. troops in Niger have been restricted to the American military bases and the U.S. embassy in the country. A U.S. military spokesperson mentioned that roughly 1,000 troops were sent back to their bases. Another U.S. official confirmed that the troops were confined to the bases and the embassy, clarifying that all of the forces were already stationed at their respective posts when the attempted coup took place. Now, 
As the U.S. has ended the aid, and with it, the notion that there is cooperation left between the U.S. and Niger, we will see more cold actions by Niger. U.S. officials continue to stress that the situation remains highly unpredictable, and their focus is on diplomatic initiatives in collaboration with regional partners to restore democratic governance in Niger. The overall U.S. military stance in the country has not changed, as that would require a separate policy decision. However, the Pentagon is exercising strategic patience as we monitor the situation and observe how it unfolds, as stated by the military spokesperson. For around a decade, the U.S. has had troops in Niger, mainly providing advice and training to the Nigerian forces on counterterrorism strategies. Earlier, the U.S. viewed the takeover as a consequence of an internal domestic dispute between Bazoum and the head of the Presidential Guard, General Abdurrahman Etiani. However, when it was confirmed that the military junta was in no mood to carry out the U.S. orders, the U.S. labeled this domestic dispute as a coup. Pentagon officials have confirmed the U.S. troop movement within Niger, which shows that soon, we will see their withdrawal as well. The Pentagon reported that the U.S. troops deployed in Niger are currently in the process of transitioning from Airport 101 near the capital, Niamey, to Airport 201 in Agadez. Deputy Press Secretary Sabrina Singh stated during a press briefing at the Pentagon, there's no immediate threat to American troops and there's no indication of violence on the ground. This is purely a precautionary measure. Yes, a precautionary measure to make it easier for the U.S. to withdraw troops on its own before the Niger Junta orders it. The directive to relocate the troops was issued by the U.S. Africa Command. Agadez is approximately 920 kilometers away from Niamey by road. The reason why they have been ordered to move is to concentrate them in one place where the withdrawing mission can take place. Because the U.S. has ended the aid to Niger, it's unlikely that the Niger junta will allow the U.S. troops to be in Niger. Whether the U.S. wants this or not, it has to leave as France did. That's why the U.S. is considering potential troop withdrawal from Niger in the coming weeks. According to a pair of U.S. officials, the United States is reflecting the initiation of troop withdrawal from Niger in the near future. Should this plan proceed, it would mark a significant shift in the presence of the American military in the country. Sources suggest that as many as half of the current 1-100 troops stationed in Niger could potentially be redeployed. However, a final decision on the withdrawal of troops has yet to be solidified, and the precise number of personnel set to leave remains undetermined. In the aftermath of the military takeover six weeks ago, the U.S. has maintained its military positions in Niger, keeping troops stationed at two air bases and the embassy in Niamey. However, the relocation of troops from one base to another might necessitate the departure of some personnel from the country as capacity limitations become apparent, as highlighted by three U.S. officials. One official suggested that the reduction in troops from Niger could start in the following weeks, Despite these considerations, the Pentagon remains intent on maintaining a military presence in Niger for as long as possible. You should know that Niger serves as a critical center for U.S. intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance flights in the region, enabling the monitoring of extremist activities in neighboring Mali and Burkina Faso. While ISR drone flights were temporarily halted in late July following the coup, recent developments suggest the resumption of intermittent ISR operations. Earlier reports indicated that the Biden administration had been exploring strategies to retain U.S. forces and assets in Niger to sustain counterterrorism operations, despite diminishing prospects of the military junta relinquishing power to the democratically elected president. A recent announcement from the Department of Defense indicated that some non-essential personnel and contractors would be departing Niger alongside the relocation of specific troops from Air Base 101 in Niamey to Air Base 201 in Agadez executed in collaboration with the Nigerian military. The U.S. is infamous for using aid as a tool. There have been earlier cases where aid has been employed to exert influence and achieve strategic goals. This makes it clear that the U.S. government uses aid to pressure or manipulate recipient countries into aligning with its own interests or agendas, sometimes at the cost of these countries' autonomy and independence. One common way this is perceived is through the specific requirements tied to aid packages. 
the U.S. may demand that recipient countries fulfill certain political, economic, or social criteria, like implementing particular reforms, adopting specific policies, or supporting U.S. positions in international forums. Failing to meet these conditions can lead to a reduction or cessation of aid, significantly impacting the recipient nation's progress and stability. That's what we are seeing in Niger. As the U.S. has found that the Niger military junta is not a puppet that can be abused, it has announced to end its aid to Niger. Critics argue that using aid as a tool can erode the self-governing capabilities and sovereignty of recipient countries, compelling them to prioritize U.S. interests over their own national priorities and the well-being of their citizens. It can also foster reliance on aid, hindering the development of sustainable, independent economies and institutions. It's true that the U.S. has strategically employed aid to advance its foreign policy goals in certain instances, including humanitarian and developmental aid to numerous countries. It's because no lunch is free. Every country knows that the U.S. will never help a country without having ulterior motives. All the programs like the support of sustainable development, poverty reduction, healthcare initiatives, and disaster relief efforts give the U.S. a certain influence. Even if these programs do not appear as a tool to influence, without them, the recipient country gets halted, and ultimately it has to prioritize U.S. interests for these programs. However, this time, it's different. Instead of reversing actions just to get aid, the Niger military junta has taken a step further. It has accepted the fact that aid cannot make Niger independent, so it's better to let it go. However, since the U.S. is not giving aid, there is no point in keeping the U.S. troops and military bases. Kicking them out at a cost of $500 million seems a pretty good deal, which the military junta knows. Therefore, instead of getting blackmailed and reversing the coup, the Niger military junta has taken a bold stance by deciding to implicitly ask the U.S. to call its troops back and end bases. What do you think? Should the military junta in Niger ask the U.S. troops to leave? Why does the U.S. still want to have bases to be used for drone attacks if it thinks the Niger coup is undemocratic? Let us know your thoughts on how Niger should handle the U.S. the same way it did with France. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.